Hi, I'm Kep Kepner, CPA here in Dallas. A lot of people are afraid of having an IRS audit. And in many cases, they should be, because the reality is if the IRS disallows some deductions or finds income that's unreported, they can not only get you to pay tax on that, but they can also extend the audit to three-year periods. They can add penalties and those penalties can be as high as 25%. So instead of owing the IRS 10,000 a year for three years, all of a sudden you get a bill that's due now and it's for 50 grand. So that's the cost of a nice car. And the reality is you gotta give it to the IRS at that point. So when you work with the IRS on an audit, it really pays to have a CPA intercede for you because the IRS auditor knows that we know what we're talking about also. I can give you some examples. I can give you an example of a client of mine that had uh, a travel business and he had several entities, some of which owned buses, some of which owned uh, limousines, others which were management companies, and they were different kinds of entities. Some were S-Corps and some were regular corps. Because of the way we structured it and the course of the audit, the reality is my client got back about $30,000 instead of owing money. When the IRS gets involved in an audit, they're not, they want to follow the rules. To their credit, I'll say they want to follow the rules. So if you have a certain kind of entity that's supposed to own various assets and the assets have really been reported in a different entity, you can make the case that those really should have been moved. So what happened in my client's case, his S-Corp where he had personal liability for income passing through the S-Corp to him. He, owed ta he did not owe tax in that entity. His corporation, which he had already shut down, his regular corporation, owed tax, and he didn't have any personal liability for that. So he has an old corporation out there that owes tax that he will never be collected, and he has paid all the tax and actually got a refund in his S-Corp or on his personal return because of structuring. So. When you have a strategy built around several entities, you want to also consider the tax ramifications because you may go through an audit and come out in great shape. I have another client going through an audit on a, a construction company that he owns. The IRS has said, I see all these draws you took out of the ATM which you say you use for business purposes, I want receipts. So my clients had to go back and find several thousand dollars of receipts that approximated the same time frame as when he took money out of the ATM. So if you're taking money out of an ATM, then you're gonna have to have receipts for that. The fact that you drew money out of an ATM the fact that you used a credit card, the fact that you wrote a check, none of those are proof of what the money was spent for. They're only documents. On that credit card, you need the receipt for what you actually charged. For that check, you need the bill from that vendor that showed exactly what you paid. For those ATM withdrawals of $50 at a time, you need to have receipts in the general same time frame that you use that $50 to pay for. So if you have all of that, then you're in good shape for an audit. Now auditors, when they audit a company, or an individual for that matter, the first thing they do is ask for the bank statements. They add up all the deposits and they see if that ties to the revenues in your company or to the income for you, the individual taxpayer. That's where they start. They will take out those transfers between your savings account and your checking account, but they will be looking for that. 
And if you didn't report enough income, then you better be prepared to talk about why that's the case, because the IRS will look at that first. Then they'll ask for all kinds of other documents. I have a, not an IRS audit, but I have a sales tax audit going on in my office right now. My client has, bought, has brought in about 30 boxes of documents related to that auditor. That's because the client and myself, neither one of us, want the client to talk to the auditor. We want to put the auditor in a room, let them work on their stuff, come up with the exceptions, and let us deal with them. So that's a real solid business strategy for dealing with an auditor. So if you need help in this area and want to understand your risks of being audited, give us a call. Thanks.